Alright, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to use the Displace modifier um, to create a terrain using a black and white or grayscale image that either you've created in Photoshop or have found on Google Images. So what you want to start off with is a plane. I'm going to go ahead and round this out to be about 500 by 500. And you want to increase the length and width segments to create a mesh. So the mesh is going to be about 150 by 150 segments. So as you can see, you have a lot of area to work with that is going to easily displace this mesh to create your terrain. So what we want to do next is go over to the internet browser of your choice. And I'm going to Google black and white terrain. Let's try black and white terrain map. And I'm going to go to images. And we want to look for images that are reminiscent of something like this. If you click on the image, usually um, you have more options that you can work with. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. Um, the reason why I'm choosing this is because it has a large amount of whites and dark images, dark parts. Um, the whites go ahead and they're the higher part of your terrain map and the blacks are going to be the lowest. So anything that's grayscale or in between is going to be mid-range. So I'm going to right click and do a save picture as. Um, if you have a project folder, go ahead and save it in there. I'm going to go ahead and just save it to my desktop. From there, I'm going to go to my Modify tab and add the Displace modifier. You can do this by just typing it in or scrolling down. And under Displace, you'll see you have a place for bitmap and for a map. So for this, I have a bitmap. We just got it off of Google Images. And I'm going to go to my desktop where I save the image. And I'm going to pick this. So what you're going to see is nothing happens to the plane just yet. This means we have to increase the strength. So as I increase the strength, I see a terrain appear. Um, the more that you increase it, the more warped and sharp your terrain gets. So I like to keep it, keep it relatively low, um, just so you can get as much detail as possible. All right, I'll show you what that looks like without the edge faces on. So what we can do from here is if we go to M, open up our material editor, I can drag this bitmap into one of my material slots. Come on. And you want to make an, ins an instance if that pops up. So from here, I can adjust the size of my tiling, um, but it's good to just have a record of that in your slot here. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and go to top view and I'm going to drag out another plane, same size. So we'll do 500 by 500 again. And I want them to be directly on top of each other. So let's round that out to zero. And I want to select my second plane. Let's go ahead and name it water for easy access. And I want to drag it up. So I have some nice small lakes and tributaries form in here. Um, depending on your scene, you can make this as high or as low as you want. Um, but that looks good for this project here. So again, under my modifier list, I'm going to use the displace modifier again to create my water. But this time, instead of using a bitmap image, I want to use map. And you'll see a familiar map browser pop up, and I'm going to use noise. So again, doing the same thing, I can adjust the strength, and you'll see these waves kind of forming here. Um, I don't like the way they look right now. So I'll just go ahead and drag that down to my terrain. 
I'm going to open up my material editor again and I'm going to drag my map into a second material slot and make an instance. So by making an instance, whatever change I make in the material slot is going to also change my water in my viewport. So right now I can adjust the size of my waves. Um, I want them to be maybe a little bit, you know, something more along the lines of that. Um, I can do fractal, which is going to give it a little bit more variation here, and turbulence is going to be a lot of variation, which I don't want that. So my high and low levels, I can also adjust to figure out what kind of water I want. Um, one is probably going to be the most realistic, otherwise we start dealing with some different depressions there. You know, doing the same thing with the adjusting the low points. And I'm going to decrease the number of levels because I'm not going to have, I don't really want a very wavy noise threshold here. Alright, so something like that. Um, not perfect, but for this tutorial it's okay. So I can also do some more adjusting to my water if I add a an edit poly. There's a feature that allows me to push and pull. So if I go down to the paint deformation, I can push and pull. And you'll see what happens to the water here. I can also relax it. So it's going to depress some of the areas as well. So from here, if you, de if you decide to do that, you can change the brush, brush strength and brush size and make your adjustments from there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And I'm going to make a camera. So I'm going to do Control C, just camera from view. And I'm going to change my water to a blue just for the tutorial's sake and the mountains to this brown color. Alright. Alright, almost done. I'm going to go to my top viewport again, and since my water is going to be a reflective material, um, I want it to reflect off of a sand base that is underneath it. And it's up to you how much you want to do with the sand. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to add a, um, a noise modifier. So again, you can go ahead and use dis Displace. You can go to Map, you can use Noise, or even Cellular. Dent also works. I'll use Dent. Drag an instance into the material slot. Adjust the strength. No, it doesn't have to be too much here. And obviously sand granules are really small, so... There's no right or wrong answer here, just whatever you like. Okay. So let's name this sand. Get back and name this terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and add materials, so I'll put up my material editor, and I can go down to liquid, and I know a lot of people do like seeing the blue water, so I'm just going to go ahead and try tropical. Obviously the water is going to reflect off of its environment, so what we can do there is we, if we want to go to rendering and environment, we can add a slight blue global lighting tint. Um, for my sand, which I'll get a good view here, open up my material editor again, go to a new material slot, I'm just going to type in sand. There should be a material here. Site work is what you want. Drag that on. And show material in viewport is always going to be beneficial. 
No, but I was adjusting my camera angle. That's okay. And I'll do a quick save of my project. And finally, I'm going to add a bitmap texture to my mountains. So go back to your Google Images. And you can type in rock texture. And I'm just going to go with a pretty simple brown one, something along the lines of you know, this looks good. So I'm going to do a save picture as. Again, I'll save it in my desktop. Save it into your project folder if you have one. And I'm going to open up Photoshop. And I want to change the color of my texture to black and white. How this works is with bump maps, you have the diffuse color, which is going to be the colored rock image, and you have the bump map, which is going to give the illusion of depth and texture. So you're going to go to File, Open, go to your desktop, bring in this rock texture surface. I'm going to do a file, Save As, this is going to be my rock diffuse. You should do the same thing. And to change it to black and white, all I have to do is go to image mode, image mode, grayscale, discard all the information, and now you have the black and white image. So you're going to do a file, save as, rock, and instead of bump, you want to do diffuse. Or you know, instead of diffuse, you want to do bump, sorry. All right, so from here, I'll open up a new material slot, make a new standard material, and under Diffuse, I am going to add my Diffuse bitmap. Give it a second to load. And if I scroll down under my maps, go back to default, scroll down under maps, I'm going to go to bump, increase this to 150 so it's a little bit stronger, and I'm going to add my black and white rock bump. <laughs> and I'm going to drag this material onto my terrain. All right. I always like to square off my width to one and one um, just so I have a solid base from where I'm starting. I'll do the same thing with my diffuse map. And it doesn't look like anything yet so what I'm going to do is head to my UVW map modifier. I'm going to make a box uncheck my real world map size and if I click out you're going to see that some detail in this rock is showing up. If I change the size of my gizmo using my select and scale modifier that detail is going to become more tiled but it might be a little bit more relative to what we're trying to see here. So that's not perfect but I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick render. Change my background environment to light gray. Even let's just do like a sky color for now. And do a quick render and see how it turns out.
So this is our final result. Um, as you can see, our background is kind of a cop-out at this point, but in later tutorials I will show you how to add use the daylight systems and add some more dramatic lighting to make this look more realistic. Thank you for